Today, we just chopping it up with you all. So, we have done a few stories surrounding what some might refer to as the YG era. The YG stands for Young Gunners, in case you didn't know by now. Although the YG takedown was in 2016, a decade prior to that, the YG movement permeated through the Bronx. Harlem, which some consider as cousins to the Bronx, also had some of this influence. But at that time, synonymous with the YGs, another crew, OYG, would make its relevance. OYG was said to stand for original young gangsters. They were primarily based in Harlem along the late 140s to 160th Street and Amsterdam Avenue. This is actually the border between Harlem and Washington Heights, as Harlem ends after 155th Street. Of course, the territory included some of the surrounding avenues, such as Broadway or St. Nicholas. The area is a combination of two neighboring sections in Harlem, Hamilton Heights and Sugar Hill. The crew also had members in East Harlem's AK Houses and the West Harlem's Grant Houses. In the mid to late 2000s, the OYGs would feud with the YGs and other crews based in Harlem, such as the Polo Grounds. OYG had a heavy crip hierarchy, as YG had a heavy blood hierarchy. Instead of saying, I'm OYG, members would soon leave the G out, although it wasn't officially dropped, and just say that they were OY. They had no connection to the OGs from Kirtland Avenue, that is a more of a current link-up. In fact, during the 2000s, Kirtland Avenue's YGFC crew, which was the younger members God's favorite children, had a beef with OYG. OGs is kind of like the second generation of GFC just like enemies, OYG had allies in the Bronx too. This included guys like Yappi and the 280 Crips, as well as BMG, Burnside Money Getters. From our knowledge, OYG was not charged as an actual gang, at least not to the extent of the YGs. Some guys committed crimes as young men and were adjudicated as youthful offenders. Some of the names that people may remember, DVD, Flea, Tall Dave, Swoop, Big Pooh, Gunplay Say, Dizzy, a lot of guys. Dizzy was blood, but still rocked with OY. It was a Sugar Hill thing. Sugar Hill get the money, OY to the moon, they would say. Approaching late May of 2018, a 25-year-old man would be shot to death. It was a Sunday, about 2 a.m. in the morning. He was eating with his homies at a Hamilton Heights chicken joint. The hooded shooter barged into Village Fried Chicken on Amsterdam Avenue around 2 a.m. and opened fire, striking the victim in the head, according to cops. Some reports described the shooter to have a scarf or mask over his face. There were five or six guys eating at a table together, said a deli worker who witnessed the attack from across the street. He was wiping down the counter when he saw the gunman storm into the West 146th Street restaurant. Moments later, five shots rang out. The gunman came up and shot the guy while he was eating his food, the deli worker said. The shooter bolted on 146th Street, while the victim's friends scattered on Amsterdam Avenue. Investigators were still looking for the shooter. The victim would turn out to be a man named Kane. Some knew him as Country or Country Kane. So, who was Country Kane? Well, we don't know much about him. Even doing a story about OYG is a bit murky. Things weren't put out there on Front Street as much, and guys stayed solid. Kane is almost a street myth or legend, as people heard his name, but hadn't seen him. He had fallen back from the gang activity and spotlight long before his demise, or so they say. Some of the younger drill rappers have dropped his name, but listeners were unsure of who he was. He is dubbed as the creator of OYG. The name country may have came from the fact that he is actually from North Memphis. Maybe he had a country accent and people in the New York neighborhood started calling him that. That's just an assumption. This piece is more to start a conversation, and hopefully people tap in to give their accounts, and we do a bigger story later. Or maybe another publication will execute this. There is a lot of hearsay when it comes to Kane. It was said that he would post on the hill with two guns, was involved in shootings and robberies. He was iconic in the Biggie era, the time where the Biggie marmot coats were being robbed, and allegedly, he had been a victim and victimized others. Oh my king, man! We got my son Country Biggie, see that on Fleet Back, Rob? Country or Kane had been to jail before, but we are unsure of his charges. Some say he was a prolific drug dealer at one point. He had been around many of the hip industry stars and had close ties to Dipset rapper Jewel Santana. Santana did a song in tribute to Kane called Summer of Kane. If you know, you know. Kane also had ties to the ASAP mob. Harlem is connected one way or another anyway.
The death of three teenagers in one week would garner a lot of attention to the Bronx. This would in turn, shed light on the Bronx drill scene. This would also make Harlem prevalent, as the drill music only reflected what was going on in the streets. Buladi was from Mott Haven, home of the YGs. Buladi was killed right before Bronx drill blew up, and he got killed in Sugar Hill on April 7, 2020. In that situation, a white car and about four or five dudes on foot chased Wu Ladi to West 154th Street and St. Nicholas Avenue, where they beat him with a metal trash can and broom. Stop running, Wu! Stop running, Wu Ladi! The group abandoned Wu Ladi on the street at about 12.50 a.m. with stab wounds to his torso and thigh. The injured teen was rushed to Harlem Hospital where he died. Police used video surveillance to find the driver of the car. Just hours before the murder, the driver rented the vehicle at a Zipcar location in Harlem. Not to mention, you had the K-Flock situation in December 2021. He was charged with murder after police in Sugar Hill found Oscar, 24, with bullet wounds to his neck and back. It's alleged that after a few words between K-Flock and Oscar, from only a few yards away, K-Flock fired the fatal shots. There is camera footage of that. It happened on 151st Street in Amsterdam Avenue to be exact, right outside the barbershop. K. Flock is locked up, and the movement he contributed to won't be doing him much benefit right now. From what it looks like, he won't have another court date for almost 10 years. That might change, who knows. There has been other deaths, but the most latest is Naughty. There is the Naughty Bop song out now, mocking the young Sugar Hill rapper in the manner in which he died. Naughty was stabbed in an incident at a train station. He was 14 at the time. As for Kane, he would not live to see all of this, the drill and what has become of the movement he started. He had work, doing construction and was into keeping his body fit. He was one of three sons, he loved his brothers, from home and from the street. Love can get you killed though, as his death was was alleged to be a setup. As we said in prior videos, we all alive, and we are creating history every day. OYG, and its early days, is in part, the legacy of Kane. From what we know, the killer has not been apprehended. Who knows, the streets could have handled it. If that's not the case, then it might still be being investigated. Besides, there hasn't been a major Sugar Hill indictment in some time. Another unsolved murder took place in the summer of 2019, or at least to our knowledge it is unsolved. The victim was relatively known as well. A gunman who laid in wait, brazenly shot the man to death execution style in the doorway of a Harlem deli. Leroy Finnezy, 29, walked into the Funfair Deli on Lenox Avenue at West 137th Street, just after 7 p.m. The gunman ambushed him from behind. Leroy definitely was the intended target, said the source. He followed him in and shot him once in the neck from behind. He walked up behind him and pow, pow, said a witness, who wouldn't give his name. He fell in the doorway of the deli. After the shooting, the suspect is believed to have hopped into a nearby car and headed away, police said. Medics rushed Leroy to Harlem Hospital, directly across the street from the shooting scene. He could not be saved. Cops found a single shell casing in front of the deli's concrete front step. The shooting was caught on video, but it the images gave the poor image of the suspect, who wore a hoodie, sources said. We couldn't see his face. He had the hoodie pulled over it, said a police source. Besides the black hoodie, the shooter wore blue jeans and sported a shiny gold watch, police said. Leroy's uncle was Big L, yeah, Big L the rapper, who was also killed in Harlem. Leroy's father, also named Leroy, was known in the streets as Big Lee, and Big L can be heard shouting him out in some of his music. To my brother Big Lee, flamboyant entertainment. So his son, Leroy, would be called Lil Lee. As for Big L, his mural is still in Harlem till this day, right there, on 140th Street and Lenox, right across from the street from the park where L and his crew, NFL, sold drugs. Two blocks down from that territory, Lil Nephew lost his life in the place Big L himself dubbed, the Danger Zone. Weirdly enough, Lil Lee died on the third anniversary of another man's death, Gerard. Gerard was once suspected of committing three homicides, including the slaying of Lil Lee's uncle Big L. Gerard Woodley was shot in the head and back during a clash in front of his home, the Danger Zone, same spot he allegedly spilled Big L's blood, 139th and Lennox. It was three shots fired. They were back to back, someone said. A motive for the killing was not disclosed. Police sources believed Woodley feared his alleged misdeeds would eventually catch up to him. There is more to this, but that's another story. 
Sadly, a few days before his death, Lil Lee and his people had finished a script for a movie called, Put It On. They had been working on it for about two years, and it was based on the life and times of Big L. Likely, it would have depicted his own father's death, Big Lee. But yeah, we just wanted to chop it up, talk about these two murders, Kane and Big L's nephew, two pretty known dudes in the streets, for their own reasons respectively. But that about wraps it up for this one, and as always, stay low and thanks for watching.